Well, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, really appreciate uh, everyone joining us in the attendee list, as well as getting to see all of the, the great bright-eyed and bushy-tailed faces of the South Dakota Arts Council staff, all four, which is in exciting news in and of itself. My name is Andrew Reinertz. I'm the Community Development Director with Arts South Dakota. And we're uh, really excited to be able to talk today about some of the uh, CARES Act funding from the South Dakota Arts Council. First, I'd like to say a quick thank you to our partners. Um, of course, the South Dakota Arts Council provides much of our funding that allows these kinds of activities to happen. And so we're very grateful um, that they're such a wonderful partner to the work that we're all trying to do throughout the state to maintain and, and cultivate a very creative uh, South Dakota for everyone. And as well as the Bush Foundation, who are another strong partner of Art South Dakota. Today, for the question and answer process, we would uh, pre please appreciate it if you would use the Q&A button that is down at the bottom of your Zoom window. That will allow you to ask your questions and then we can flag those to be either answered live or answer those by text. And as we take Q&A breaks, I'll make sure to share all those questions with the Arts Council staff. Also, please feel free to use the chat function to talk to each other or to ask any uh, technical questions you might have. Um, I should also mention that uh, my coworker Sherry Cosell is in the attendee list and uh, our executive director Jim Spears says hello to everyone. He's on about a nine hour, eight hour conference call with the Nebraska Arts Council today as they're going through their grant applications for the first round of CARES Act funding. So he's, uh, he's seeing this from a different angle today and can't be with us but wanted to make sure to, uh, to send his greetings to everyone. So at this point, I will turn it over to the South Dakota Arts Council. And thank you all again so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Andrew. Uh, and I wanna thank Art South Dakota for having the South Dakota Arts Council on for today's webinar. And also thank them uh, for this outstanding webinar series that they've been doing this spring. It's, it's really brought us some interesting topics uh, to take a look at. I also wanna thank all the participants who are joining us today. Uh, so before we dive in and talk a little bit about applying for CARES Act funding from the South Dakota Arts Council and providing a, you with a bit of a guide to our CARES Act funding, I just want to go ahead and introduce the South Dakota Arts Council staff. So again, I'm Patrick Baker. I'm the director of the South Dakota Arts Council. I've been in this position for almost four and a half years now. Also on today's call, we have uh, South Dakota Arts Council Deputy Director Rebecca Cruz. Uh, who also heads up our arts education initiatives, including our artists in schools and communities uh, uh, residency program. Uh, Kate Vandell has been with the South Dakota Arts Council now for over four years, uh, or is coming right up on four years, I believe. And Kate serves as our arts grant specialist. Uh, she also is a process analyst um, at heart, and she really takes a look at all of our operations, uh, primarily granting. Uh, but our programs as well and determines ways that we can be more efficient in what we do. And then we're very thrilled today to be able to introduce the newest member of the South Dakota Arts Council staff, Sarah Carlson, who serves as our arts program specialist. And uh, Sarah is going to be managing our touring artist program, as well as uh, helping to co-coordinate our Art for State Buildings public art program and uh, doing things with our website and just a number of other things. So we're thrilled that she can be here with us uh, today for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start today by just basically giving an overview of CARES funding and its intersection with the South Dakota Arts Council. So back in, this would have been early April or well, early to mid April, right? I think right around April 8th possibly. We received word from the National Endowment for the Arts uh, that South Dakota would be receiving CARES funds and that these funds were then available to us to go ahead and turn around uh, to start uh, subawarding once we had a process in place uh, and everything was ready to go, subawarding to nonprofit organizations in South Dakota's arts sector. So the intent of the CARES funding is really twofold. There are two primary uh, reasons for the CARES funding, and that's to help save jobs in the arts sector. And then it's really operational support. It's an attempt to try to help keep the doors open 
uh, for the many, many organizations across the state of South Dakota uh, that add value to the economy and, and creative lives of our communities. The, there are some limitations to CARES Fund, and you've already heard some of this and probably some of the messaging that we've done, uh, but the NEA is prohibited from funding individual artists. So in other words, CARES funds cannot be used for direct grants to individual artists. That same limitation then follows through uh, to the CARES funds that we turn around and sub-award uh, on behalf of the Arts Endowment. Uh, CARES Act funds may not be used to fund individual artists. And that is um, actually, for what it's worth, that is, that is also, um, that's a limitation of NEA direct grants in general. So when the South Dakota Arts We're actually using uh, state funds for, for those purposes. So, you know, what we're calling our program uh, for CARES funding is emergency assistance grants. And again, there are some key purposes for this funding uh, that organizations may apply for. Its intent is to uh, help secure jobs, whether that be uh, full time employment, uh, part time employment, or contract employment. And then we're trying to keep uh, nonprofit organizations in our statewide arts community operational. Uh, we want to distribute the CARES funds as quickly as we can. And you're gonna hear more uh, as this call progresses about a timeline and some more specifics about applying for CARES funds. But the goal, of course, is to get these funds to the organizations in need as quickly as we can. And I will say that these emergency assistance grants are one-time grants. Uh, available to eligible nonprofits, arts and cultural organizations. They do not require matching funds. Uh, and we are going to distribute this as quickly as we can. And again, we'll hear a little bit more about the timeline uh, as we continue on. So now I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about eligibility. So again, our emergency assistance grants are eligible uh, to nonprofit arts and cultural organizations within the state of South Dakota. These organizations must be tax exempt uh, under section 501c3 of the US uh, IRS code. So in other words, 501c3 nonprofit organizations. These same organizations need to either, uh, well not, not either, they need to both be incorporated within the state of South Dakota and also physically located in the state of South Dakota. We are also asking that applicants for CARES funds emergency assistance grants from the South Dakota Arts Council, have arts in their mission statement uh, in some form or another. And, and then also that more than half of their programming be dedicated to the arts. I wanna note an important exception here. We've had a number of questions um, as we opened our phase one uh, intent to apply already um, from some of our existing grantees that receive operational support grants from the South Dakota Arts Council. And those uh, organizations are eligible uh, due to the fact that they're already receiving those operational support grants from us. So there may be an exception or two within that pool of Arts Challenge grantees. So again, and just so all of our Arts Challenge grantees understand, uh, they are both eligible and encouraged, of course, to apply for CARES funds from the South Dakota Arts Council. So delving a little bit further into eligibility here, uh, eligible organizations would include arts education organizations, um, art service organizations. Uh, this could be um, any group that is, uh, you know, uh, other arts councils, local arts agencies, service organizations, and so forth. Performing arts organizations. Uh, so this would be organizations that, of course, produce or present a live discipline-based performance experiences and then literary arts organizations. In addition, uh, this would also be uh, open to organizations who um, focus on visual arts or film, video, digital type of content, uh, collecting or material organizations. So uh, potentially museums would be uh, included in this and then public broadcasting organizations. Now, this list of potentially eligible organizations doesn't mean that you that you are eligible. You have to meet all of the eligibility requirements, but that gives us some examples of the types of organizations that 
that are eligible for emergency assistance grants from the South Dakota Arts Council. So just to tick through a few examples of organizations that are not eligible for CARES funds, uh, those would be oper uh, organizations whose primary mission does not focus on areas of arts, the arts or culture. For-profit organizations are not eligible. Um, and government agencies, universities, colleges, uh, academic departments or entities, any entity basically that has a significant public funding source. Uh, and there are some reasons behind that eligibility requirement, uh, including having access to CARES funds uh, from the federal government and through another, uh, a number of different other avenues. But again, uh, it's important to note the caveat there. So we do have some uh, operational support grantees is currently Arts Challenge grantees from the South Dakota Arts Council who would fall under one or more of these categories. And again, uh, by virtue of being a current fiscal year 20 Arts Challenge grantee, you are eligible to apply for CARES funds from the South Dakota Arts Council. Um, other types of organizations that are not eligible would include K-12 schools, religious organizations. Uh, and then I, I wanna take a moment just to talk about this. Uh, organizations, arts or cultural organizations in South Dakota who will receive CARES funding directly from the National Endowment for the Arts or from Arts Midwest, which is our regional arts organization, would not then be eligible to receive CARES funds from the South Dakota Arts Council as well. Having said that, we want all eligible organizations to apply now and for funds from the South Dakota Arts Council. And then once you know whether or not you will receive direct CARES funds uh, from the National Endowment for the Arts, will determine whether or not you are eligible then to receive CARES funds from the South Dakota Arts Council. Arts Midwest fits into this picture. And in fact, I'd like to thank Arts Midwest. Uh, Arts Midwest is our nine state regional arts organization. They have committed some of their CARES funds to helping support nonprofit arts organizations in South Dakota as well but they have asked us to handle that application process and determine which organizations will receive the funding that they're able to kick into the equation here for South Dakota. So you will be applying, if you were to receive CARES funds from the Arts Midwest, it would happen through your application process to the South Dakota Arts Council. But we do wanna thank Arts Midwest uh, for kicking in their contribution uh, to our statewide creative economy as well. So now I'm just gonna jump into funding and talk briefly about that. So when we take a look at funding priorities uh, for the CARES funds that the South Dakota Arts Council will disseminate, eligible nonprofit arts and cultural organizations are, that are facing significant financial hardship related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So those clearly are the organizations that we're attempting to help with the CARES funds. And so the hardships that these organizations that will apply uh, may have been facing and continue to face uh, as we face the COVID-19 health crisis would be uh, facing the possibility of temporary or even permanent closure, uh, the loss of or difficulty preserving paid staff, the loss of venue or workspace, and then significant loss of revenue. So no single organization needs to have experienced all of these hardships by any means to apply for CARES funds, uh, but would need to have experienced at least one of those. And of course, we know that a number of local arts agencies, of course, in South Dakota, have uh, primarily or entirely volunteer staff. So while you may not be facing uh, the hardship of having to uh, furlough or eliminate staff, paid staff, uh, you certainly uh, could be facing a number of other hardships that would fall under this category. The types of funding that the South Dakota Arts Council has designated for its emergency assistance grants using CARES funds from the federal government will be operational support. So operational support grants will be open to all current operational support grantees of the South Dakota Arts Council. Those groups are primarily what we call our Arts Challenge grantees. So if you are a current recipient of a fiscal year 20, that's the fiscal year that we are in right now, if you are receiving an Arts Challenge grant from the South Dakota Arts Council, 
you are eligible to apply for an operational support grant using CARES funds. We also have a couple of our statewide services grantees that really fall under the same umbrella of operational support from the South Dakota Arts Council. So those select statewide services grantees uh, have been invited directly from the South Dakota Arts Council to also apply for operational support with CARES funds. So again, that's the first category is operational support. The second category is what we're calling small organizational support. This category is designed for basically all the rest. So for local or community arts organizations, that's our focus. But if you are an eligible organization, if you're eligible to apply for emergency assistance grants from the South Dakota Arts Council, and you're not currently receiving an operational support from SDAC, then you, you would be, uh, we'll put you into the category then of small organizational support. And then the South Dakota Arts Council, again, this kind of ties back to partly the limitation of being able to spend federal CARES funds for direct payment to artists. Since that is not a possibility with CARES funds, we really wanted to, uh, you know, all of, all of these CARES funds grants, I should say, whether it's operational support or small organizational support, the hope, of course, is that those grants to those nonprofit agencies will turn around and help them uh, employ artists, continue to employ artists, to help keep, stay operational, and also to directly pay artists uh, to do work for them. Um, and so, again, we're hoping that indirectly, these CARES funds are getting out to artists, but we wanted to do the best we could to focus on a program, uh, a grant program for emergency assistance grants that would put the artists at the heart of the equation. And you're gonna hear more about this later in our, our, during this call uh, and during our presentation, but we have developed something called Residencies for Recovery, and this will be for community arts organizations to pay artists to conduct a long-term residency to help address challenges that are born from the COVID-19 pandemic. And again, you will hear more about that as we continue in greater detail. But again, the three types of funding available will be operational support. Those, those grants will go to current uh, operational support grantees of the South Dakota Arts Council, and then small organizational support for any other uh, eligible organization in the state of South Dakota not receiving operating support from, arts, or from South Dakota Arts Council currently, and then the Residencies for Recovery program. So operational support, and I've already really detailed this, so I won't spend much time here. Um, this includes our current fiscal year 19 and 20 Arts Challenge grantees, as well of, as just a couple of statewide services grantees that have been invited to apply. Now, getting back to small organizational support for local or community arts organizations. Uh, oh, and just to back up, the, the operational support grants uh, from the South Dakota Arts Council have a tiered funding system. So it's going to be based, you know, the grant award there would be based on the eligible operating expenses from the organizations as, as they were submitted at the time of application for an Arts Challenge grant. Now, when we move into the small organizational support for local or community arts organizations, this is a competitive category for smaller organizations not currently receiving operational support from SDAC. These awards will be up to $2,500, and then these grant awards uh, will be determined by SDAC staff and the, the council at large. The council is, of course, our 11-member governor-appointed advisory board. And I think at this point, um, Andrew, if it's okay, um, before we move on uh, and turn it over to Rebecca to talk about residencies for recovery in greater depth, are there any questions that we could try to answer right now before we move on? Yeah, there are uh, uh, two questions. Um, first of all, one question is just a quick clarification on the Arts Midwest funding. Just to clarify, you did say that the single application for the CARES Act funding would um, uh, would open up the organization to funding from the Arts Midwest program as well. It's not that that is a separate application that they would be submitting? No, so it's, uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, no, it's not, uh, well, let me, let me make a distinction here. Um, 
support from Arts Midwest with CARES funds would you would need to apply through the South Dakota Arts Council to receive that, but it's not additional funding. I think the, the best way to think of it, Andrew, and, and whoever asked this question and whoever's listening, uh, would be to, to think of it as Arts Midwest has, is going to kick in an amount of money to our pool of CARES funds <clears throat> that we have available to sub-award to eligible organizations within the state of South Dakota. One advantage this really gives us is the ability to, um, and, and I'll just talk a second about this. We've addressed this uh, publicly before, but getting back to trying to get these awards out as quickly as we can, you're going to hear later that one of the reasons that we have for a, a series of phases for application have to do with our ability to spend the CARES funds. So the South Dakota Arts Council has to seek legislative authority to, to spend its, its grant funds each year. And in that fact, that's our entire budget. So each year we go to the legislature to seek spending authority to spend both our federal and our state grant dollars. And the CARES funds, of course, well, that, this was all unexpected. Uh, this health crisis, nobody expected to be facing what we're facing right now. And so when we found out we were gonna get these CARES funds, those CARES funds push us well beyond our spending authority for the current fiscal year. So while we do have some spending authority left this fiscal year that we will use to start awarding phase one awards for CARES fund grant support, Arts Midwest has also kicked in a contribution to that pool of CARES funds that will be available in the first phase of funding. So, so basically, if you were to receive support from Arts Midwest, that would happen by virtue of having applied for CARES funds from us, from the South Dakota Arts Council. So again, we thank them for contributing to this, but we are handling that application process. And then I want to make a distinction between that and the National Endowment for the Arts. That is a separate application, and it's, it, it already has taken place. There were only certain organizations in the state of South Dakota that were eligible to apply for direct uh, to, to apply for CARES funding directly from the National Endowment for the Arts. I want to say there were 11 organizations that were identified to us as being eligible. Each one of those organizations should have been contacted by the Arts Endowment. And in fact, um, I reached out to each of those organizations as well to try to remind them or if they, for, for whatever reason, weren't aware. Um, but if you applied for uh, funds directly, if you were one of those 11 organizations able to do that, we again are asking you to apply for CARES funds from us too, because uh, we won't know yet. Uh, I, I don't know what the timeline is for uh, the Arts Endowment and notifying applicants of whether or not they will receive uh, direct CARES funds from the NEA, but you won't be able to receive both. We ask again, all eligible organizations to apply with us, but if you're going to receive funds directly from the NEA, then you won't receive additional CARES funds from SDAC. Great. Thanks, Patrick. Um, two other quick questions that came in. Um, uh, one is just confirming. I believe the answer is yes, but just to confirm, as an organization who is not currently receiving grants from SDAC, but is otherwise eligible, um, they can only apply for this small organizational support grant for the one-time grant up to $2,500, correct? Yes, that is correct. Great. And then uh, the last question so far is, can an organization apply for both the small operational support grants and the residencies for recovery that you're about to talk about? Well, tell you what, I think the best way to answer that question is just to let Rebecca uh, dive in. And I think that that's going to help uh, show some of the nuances of this program that we're, that we're hoping for. And so, um, I, I guess, yeah, rather than give the simple answer, let's go ahead and, and, and take a deeper dive into residencies for recovery. And if that question is still lingering after we get through that, we'll, we'll be sure to directly answer it. Great, perfect. And then actually, sorry, one more quick came in before we moved on, which I think you'll address later. Um, but um, just the questions are regarding um, when the second pool, the second round is going to happen for those that were invited to the second round. And I assume you'll be discussing timelines later in the presentation. Yes. Okay. Uh, in fact, um, Kay Vandell, our arts grant specialist, um, she's going to kind of be bringing up the rear here after Rebecca talks about residencies for recovery. 
uh, then Kate is going to talk a little bit more about the application process, including timelines. Perfect. Great. Well, then I think we're ready to move on. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me well. So I'm going to launch into the residencies for recovery, and I'll actually start with that question that, yes, if you're receiving um, funding for emergency assistance, you can still apply for the residencies for recovery program. In fact, it's just going to be an add-on to the application that some of you have already submitted or the rest of you will be submitting. Um, it will be a simple process. We're going to ask you three or four questions um, and ask you to just answer them in narrative form. But um, so it should be, you know, probably a one to two page narrative that we'll ask you to write. Um, so let me give just a quick overview here. Uh, as Patrick said, this program was really designed in response to some of the needs that we're hearing from the field. One of that, one of those is the opportunity for artists to work as we've seen so many cancellations through our residency program and touring arts programs um, and artists throughout South Dakota who aren't on those rosters but, but are also seeing mass cancellations of the work that they have contracted for. The other main thing that we want to tackle is helping organizations figure out how to recover and emerge from uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in ways that will be really meaningful and useful for them and the, commu and the com communities that they serve as a whole. So the Residencies for Recovery will aim to create a space um, for reflection during this time of uncertainty. We, um, it's based on the premise that artists are creative problem solvers who are able to build community bonds using methods that are beyond the usual capacities and expertise of government entities. Um, any or organization which is eligible to apply for our CARES funding is also eligible to apply for this program um, to help develop and implement creative planning to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and prepare for future disasters, as well as build resilient arts communities. So, so the programs that you design for your organization and with your artists, if you're um, applying for this, could include strategic planning, re-envisioning how the community can be served. They can also include artist projects and workshops for community members or exhibitions and special projects that enrich civic and cultural life and use art to improve and revive the community post-pandemic. Um, these, these are kind of three bullet points. I'll, I'll let you all know that we'll be releasing a full set of guidelines for this program on June 1st. So you'll be able to access those full guidelines. It will include all of this information plus additional um, explanation of, of, you know, delving a little bit further into what we're talking about here. So these three bullet points, um, you know, just talking about creating a space for rejuvenation of ideas and progressive thought that connects South Dakotans with their communities in the world. Uh, the residency program directed at community arts and cultural organizations and artists working in any discipline. We do want to make sure we emphasize that it can be any artist working in any discipline. We do encourage all community organizations to work with and hire their local community artists. But if you are unable to find local artists to work in this program, we will, um, we will consider proposals including visiting artists as eligible for funding. So when we ask for you to complete the few questions that we'll have for the application, we're going to be asking you to describe a challenge that you'd like to focus on and address through this residency program. Um, but we do fully expect that plans will evolve once the artist has been contracted and begins working. So we don't expect you to have fully laid out any residency plan. Uh, we know that that will come once you begin working with your artist. Next slide, please, Andrew. So there are three main purposes for the Residencies for Recovery program. The first is to provide employment opportunities for artists. The second is to assist arts organizations with focused recovery and resiliency efforts. And the third is to help communities emerge from the COVID-19 crisis in meaningful ways. The program requirements for residencies for recovery will be that the eligible sponsoring organization will make application to our agency 
And then you'll be responsible for managing the grant funds and payments to artists through the duration of the residency. A residency planning team will need to be established that will include at least one public official to work with the artist and establish goals, expectations, and a schedule of events. The entirety of the Residency for Recovery grants, which will be $7,225, that'll be a set amount, but the entirety of that grant amount will be used to pay the residency artist. And artists will incur no costs of their own for their residency work. So, and we have um, a set of expectations outlined both for the artists who will work through this program and for the organization. So we'll start with the artist expectations, which are a six to 12 month commitment, which will be agreed upon during the planning phase that that time frame will be established as a team uh, with what, however you see fit to address your challenge. We also ask that artists spend equal time dedicated to personal work and their residency work that they're doing during this time frame. Uh, that'll be on a weekly or monthly basis uh, to be determined during the planning phase with your team. We ask artists to engage uh, with the public in workshops and presentations, participate in program events and special projects with the community, and we ask that at least one public artwork, permanent or temporary, be created with community members. For organizations, the expectations are that the, the organization will plan programming and assessment with the artist and the team of community members, including at least one representative from local government, use our funds to pay the artist monthly throughout the residency duration, provide workspace or studio space for the artist. Uh, we do have a caveat that a home studio space is acceptable if the artist has one, and that's an agreement made between the artist and sponsor, but the, that a portion of the residency work should be carried out in a common, publicly accessible, and safely designed space. If an artist is not local to a community, then we'll, we'll expect organizations to provide reasonable accommodations and travel expenses. And we also ask the organization to develop a relationship and get a commitment from local government. Um, so the local government appointee to the team can be an official elected appointed or a public employee as part of the planning team um, to participate in programming and assessment through regular check-ins with the artist and the lead organization. And that's so we can make sure that there is strong community involvement in this process. So um, as I said, the full guidelines will be released on June 1st. We'll post them on our website. We'll have them with the applications for the rest of our programs. Um, residency hours will be an expectation of about 150 to 180 uh, hours working in residency with the artist. And we will begin accepting applications for this program on June 22nd with a deadline of July 6th, and Kate will revisit that timeline as she, um, as she follows up with her process. So I, we do wanna pause for any questions that anybody has about this program. We'll try to answer them, though I will just warn you, we're still finalizing the guidelines here. This is a brand new program, so you could see a few changes um, as, we, as we finalize them and release the full guidelines. Great, well, a couple of questions that have come in which may or may not be answerable as you're still finalizing the guidelines. Um, one is, is a question of, can you split this award between several artists in the community or would it be for a single artist? So we will consider proposals that include more than one artist and we'll ask that the funds be distributed, the funds and the hours for the residency be distributed accordingly with those. Great, and then um, another question are, um, I'm not entirely sh certain about this, but are the artist accommodations and travels, is this a part of the $7,225 award or is that in addition to the residency for recovery funding? So if there were travel and accommodation costs because an organization was working with an artist outside of their own community, then the organization would be responsible for those costs. The, the full amount of the grant is artist salary for the work that they're conducting in your community. Great, and then a, a follow-up question from, from someone else then is, um, 
uh, it was stated that the artists will have no cost, our materials, studio, their personal studio space, any of that included in this payment? So what we'll ask organizations to do, if there are public events, um, public art making or, or things like that that include community members, then the organization would be responsible for those tools and supplies needed for that. For the artist's own creation, which is in addition to um, the hours that they'll be spending working on their residency programs, then the artists are responsible for their own materials for their personal time. Um, great. And then two more really quick questions. One is just, uh, are filmmakers eligible to be the contracted artists? Yes, any arts discipline could be could be um, focused on through these residencies. Great. Uh, and then um, finally, uh, uh, a personal question for myself, followed up by a question from uh, one of the attendees, uh, questions about the public officials. Um, one person just asked if you could elaborate that purpose. Um, I assume it was just really to have that community buy-in. Um, but if you could elaborate just a tiny bit on that, and then also a local official, can that be, is that limited to a specific level of government? Does it have to be in municipal? Can it be county level? Is there any sort of qualification there? You know, we're going to be really open on, on that stipulation because we really believe that these organizations and artists are going to be the best ones to know who would be an appropriate person to have on their planning team. So we'll ask that you base the, the selection of that person on the, the project that you want to cover, um, as well as the engagement level that that local official is able to, to have. And so it can be an employee, you know, a city or county employee. It could be somebody who's elected. Um, it really will be really open on that. We just want to make sure that there is a direct line to the community engagement aspect and that you're, um, you know, you have a public facing um, appointee who can really advocate for this programming in your community. Uh, one more question came in and then I think we can move on. Um, the question is just, will the rate of pay be based on the length of time during the residency or is it a, a flat project? The rate of pay is the full grant amount, the $7,225. Uh, what We've just set up kind of a, a framework for what the expectation would be, which we're going to say is between 150 and 180 hours. Uh, we'll let the artists and the organizations work out exactly what those expectations are, but we feel that that's an appropriate uh, number of hours for the amount of money. Um, great. This is, this is generating a lot of good discussion. One more question, uh, as they keep coming in is, uh, are you limiting, uh, a community to a single group in that community applying for artists or can multiple groups within the same community apply for multiple artists? So this is a good question and I'm not sure that we have fully had the chance to, to investigate this yet. Um, any, any organization who's eligible to apply for CARES funds can apply for these, these grant, uh, the, these residency programs. Um, depending on the total budget after we award the emergency assistance grants, we'll, we'll we may have to make some decisions as to whether we can allow more than one in a community. Um, so it will really just depend on the number of applications that come in. Um, we haven't really set an expectation for a really high number of applications in this program. It would be great if we get a lot and we can find the money to, to do more. Um, but, we, you know, that's sort of up in the air at this point, depending on where we stand after we dole out the first uh, three phases of emergency assistance grants. Great. And then um, uh, just as a quick reminder before we move on to everyone, we'll be sharing this slide deck with all of the attendees. And I know all of this information is also available directly from the State Arts Council. And then we'll make sure to share out as soon as the Arts Council does uh, the, the full um, application and um, um, process on June 1st. We'll make sure to send that out in an email to all the attendees as well. Great. Thanks, Andrew.
All right, looks like uh, the questions are done there. So I think we'll move along to, uh, uh, to the how to apply section. I just want to say it must be a good program when it generates that much that many questions. So we're we're so excited for the excitement around everything that's happening right now. And that was a lot of excitement in one sentence. I'll try to avoid that kind of redundancy moving forward. How to apply. First, before we jump in, I do want to say, although there are different segments of the application pool, everyone is applying under the same umbrella whether you're applying for operational support or you're applying for small organizational support, you're jumping into the same pool. So I just wanted to make that clear. I, I'm not sure I clarify that anywhere in the slides, but it is just the one application. So Andrew, if you wanna to advance to the first slide. <clears throat> All eligible organizations must complete the online application and that is located on our online grant system, which is operated by GoSmart or West Staff. Those that are returning applicant organizations, those that have applied for grants in the past, will just have to log into the system and apply. There's no second steps there. There's nothing to really, um, to really do on the front end. We do ask that all returning applicants do review their profile to make sure that all of their contact information is up to date and all the information located within is up to date. As an applicant, you are receiving messages from us directly through that, that portal, that online grant system. And if you're receiving anything outside of the online grant system, it's going to the email that you include in your profile. And we are contacting the person on file in your profile. That's why we're asking that if you've had some changeover in your organization, or anything is different than it was even just a few months ago when you applied for your regular grant. Just check that profile, it takes about two seconds. Um, just make sure that all that information is correct. If you're a new applicant organization, you'll have to set up that new profile to apply. It's very quick, we're asking for contact information, address information. We do ask that you provide both your, um, your tax ID number, your FEIN, as well as a DUNS number, and then your mission statement and a brief organizational history. So if you're an organization that maybe doesn't have a DUNS number yet, you should still have time to go out and get one of those in time to um, apply, whether it's in phase two or phase three of this process. Um, so I just wanna let you know on the front end, you will need both your tax ID number and your DUNS number, as well as like Patrick talked about, a mission statement that includes or addresses the arts hopefully in some way, and then just a brief organizational history. We do review that when we review applications. It is vital to the process. Next slide. So in addition to those things for the profile and to begin the application, we just ask that you're prepared to answer the following questions. And we understand that these are hard questions. We find them to be hard questions too. We're really just asking how have you been affected or impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic? And then, as Patrick alluded to in the beginning, there's, there's very specific things that CARES funding can be expended on. And so we're asking you within the application to identify any or all of the things that you intend to spend those funds on. I'll just go ahead and tick them off again. It's salary support for full-time or partial employees or staff. It's fees to artists or contractual personnel, and it's facility costs like rent and utilities. Um, we, are, we are currently in the process in real time of developing both our grant contracts and our evaluations for this funding category. And it's very important that we, we know and we let you know that these are the three categories that CARES funding can be spent in and that we track that funding very closely as well as you as a grantee. Uh, next slide. The grant evaluation, and as you dig into the application, if you've applied under any of our other applications, you'll get in and, and kind of look around and probably get to the end of the application and say, is, is that it? Is that all there is? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a lot of questions. 
again, we're asking, we're asking what is right now very hard questions, but questions that we need to know so that as those applications come in, we can evaluate the level of need and process you for payment as quickly and efficiently as possible. So on the evaluation side, we're really, a, we're really looking at an organization's impact through the, specifically through the arts programming and services that they are providing and what their impact would be under normal circumstances. We're also trying to make sure that just, just like we would in a regular grant season, that we are looking at a geographic and demographic diversity with our, with our applicants and with our grantees. We, as, as many of you know, are especially looking to organizations that serve underserved populations. These are, these are organizations that provide opportunities for people within their community to experience art that may not otherwise be able to. And then, like I said, the questions we're asking, we're really trying to determine a demonstrated financial hardship caused by the COVID-19 health crisis, uh, whether that's on your operations, on your staffing, or on your revenue streams. That is a question that we ask directly in the application. And then we're really, with our residence for recovery and with our application as a whole, we are trying to find out from you as our applicant whether or not you have plans to move forward, whether you're still operating in some capacity, and whether you plan to, to build off of this experience and how that will impact your operations moving forward, how that's impacted you now, and how that will continue to impact you in the future. We really just wanna see that you're recognizing that changes need to be made and you're establishing plans to make those changes and improve your organization moving forward. So that's the evaluation. It's about as straightforward as the application itself. Um, again, just asking very specific questions so that we can do a very, uh, very focused evaluation on our end. And then uh, next slide. That we've gotten several questions on timeline. For those of you that made it in on the first phase of applications, um, we are we we had a phase one where it was an intent to apply, and some of you were were brought in to complete the full application, and some of you we hit the pause button on for right now. Um, the full application will open to anyone that is on pause right now and anyone that is interested in applying on June 1st. Like Rebecca said, that residencies for recovery will come on board on June 22nd. Um, for those of you that are in the applicant pool currently, you've completed the intent to apply, you've completed and submitted the application, we are in process of evaluating your applications right now and hope to have notifications out to you with award, with award information by mid-June. Notifications for phase two, which opens on June 1st and closes on June 15th, those notifications of award would go out in late June or early July, and then phase three will open on June 22nd, close on July 6th, and those notifications would go out mid to late July. A lot of different sections, a lot of different segments, but we do have them in an order that, uh, that works best for us as an agency to help to provide the funding as quickly and efficiently as possible. And I believe that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Um, one quick question that has come up there. Uh, actually, two two questions. One is just so for the 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 residencies for recovery will continue to be the same application, correct? Um, so if you are interested in that part of the program, do you reapply if, for instance, you were brought into phase one for purely the CARES Act? Um, organizational funding and now you want to do the residencies or um, do you have to apply for all of them at the same time and wait for phase three? No, Andrew, you're, you're absolutely right. So if you've been invited to complete or have completed your application already, if you were part of the phase one, 
segment of the population, we will reopen that application with the CARES, with the residencies for recovery. And you would basically just have to go back into your same application, provide the responses to the questions that we're asking and resubmit the application again. Great, thanks for that. And then um, along with that, how early um, can residencies start? Um, is that just a July 1 fiscal year or is that going to be, um, well, I suppose we, you wouldn't be notified in phase three until late July anyways. Um, is there a specific timeline of when those residencies could start? Um, so, so this is Patrick here. To answer that question, what we're doing is we're trying to get the residencies for recovery um, applications in as quickly as we can and process it so that organizations will be notified yet in July. So, you know, we're allowing ourselves mid to late July because there's there's still a lot of moving parts and things that need to be assessed between now and then. But our real hope here is to be able to allow organizations to get those residencies started in the month of July if they are at that point ready to go. The reason for that, Andrew, and, and for those who are curious, is this is a very special grant category. And um, a lot of you, if you're already current grantees of the, the South Dakota Arts Council, you may know that because of the COVID-19 crisis, we are reevaluating even our current fiscal year 20 grants and allowing some accommodations that we normally wouldn't have the ability to do, things like extending the grant period to allow for rescheduling when it's possible, events and that kind of thing. So with this very special uh, Residencies for Recovery program, that grant period will extend until June 30 of 2021. So we want to give as close to a full year as we can for those residency activities to take place. So no one will be in a bigger hurry than we are to try to make those awards and, and get those notifications out so the important work can be. Um, and then just out of curiosity, is that, is that going to be a, a um, FY21 fiscal year grant? So the residencies, would they need to be completed by June 30, 2021? Or is that process a little bit longer with that, that longer uh, residency period? I hope I don't confuse the issue with my answer. But technically speaking, all CARES funds grants, so all emergency assistance grants from the South Dakota Arts Council, technically are fiscal year 20 grants mm -hmm. because it's actually an amend. So we have a grant just like everybody else. So we have a grant in place. It's called our state partnership agreement with the Arts Endowment. Uh, and once again, thank you to the Arts Endowment for making uh, all of this public funding of the arts in South Dakota possible. But our CARES funds are an amendment to our fiscal year 20 grant. And so then technically speaking, of course, it flows out from there. But I don't think that's helpful <laughs> in a practical sense. So the best way to think of it is that, um, you know, likely most of the CARES funds awards, so for operational support and then for small organizational support, those typical grants will likely have an, uh, a grant ending period of December 31 of this year. So for this calendar year. So, and the reason for that hopefully is apparent, you know, if, the need is great right now. We're doing the best we can to hurry this process along uh, so that we can distribute those funds. But then we would expect organizations to turn around and, and make use of those funds uh, is, you know, right away, essentially. But for residencies for recovery, since it's more of an in-depth process and we're looking at six to 12 month um, residencies, then we're talking about taking that all the way out to the end of what would be fiscal year 21, but June 30, 2021. Great, thanks for that clarification. Um, one other question that just came in, um, uh, just to confirm, CARES funding will not reduce any regular arts challenge grant awards, correct? This would all be in addition to any previous funding. That is correct. These awards will be in addition to. Now, it is important to note that we will be asking uh, all organizations who receive CARES funds grants or emergency assistance grants from SDAC, they will be a separate grant, even though it's based on, for the operating support, it will be based on uh, their eligible operating expenses uh, as they applied for an Arts Challenge grant. The funds will be separate and they need to be, uh, they need to be uh, kept track of separately as well. 
So that's very important. Uh, we have to do that, and, and by virtue of that, every single uh, sub-award, this is across the nation too, not just in South Dakota, but there will be a whole separate set of reporting on CARES funds, which will be critical, of course, to get back to the federal government, uh, to give them confidence that, you know, God forbid, uh, we have another crisis like this going forward. They, you know, we want to make sure that they have the confidence to do this kind of lending and this additional um, aid. And so, so for those reasons, again, um, it will be a separate award. It won't in any way impact their current uh, operational support award, but it will require its own grant paperwork, and which we, we intend to make as minimal as possible. And then also um, recording and evaluating how those funds were used separately from their existing grant. Great. Um, thanks for that, Patrick. Two more questions coming in. Uh, one related to the residency program. Um, and some of this may not be determined yet, but what is the process if an artist is going to potentially work at two communities? Um, is that possible? What kind of a gap needs to be within? How does that work? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure we can answer that right now. I don't think that's something that we've really um, considered. Uh, other than that, we do hope that um, organizations and communities that are using this grant program will uh, will plan them out in in ways that are most beneficial to the community. So we we expect that a lot of the need will require the full 12 month period. Um, but I think we would, we would certainly consider all proposals. Uh, great, and then one other uh, budget clarification for the operational grants is um, for the projected costs of rent, um, um, staffing, et cetera, should that, what is the period of, uh, that that should be considered? Is that through December of 2020? Is that based on fiscal year? How is that set up for the budget? Um, so the, the budget within the CARES application is a whole different animal from any budget that any grant application has included before. Um, we are not looking for specific dollar amounts. We are looking for the percentages that those dollar amounts will be allocated. Hmm. And, and we then we'll be discussing the application this afternoon on our water cooler. Hmm. Um, so if people have specific questions within the application, we're, we're very happy to answer those. Um, but so many grant grantees and grant applicants pose these questions to us directly while the application was open for phase one. Um, we've done the best we can to try to uh, try to leave those concerns, um, but we're, we're really only concerned with where you intend for those monies to go. If it feels good for you to include dollar amounts in your budget, you can go ahead and do that, um, but we are just looking for the percentages of where those funds will be going, um, regardless of um, of anything. Um, obviously, like Patrick alluded to, we anticipate funds being expended by December 31st of 2020. Now, just to add to that though, Andrew, you know, for the purposes of being able to survive an audit, <laughs> if a grant were audited, um, you know, even though we're gonna be asking for percentages, you definitely, each organization who receives a grant will need to keep track of the records of those expenditures like they would for any South Dakota Arts Council grant and hang on to those for three years. So in other words, if an organization were to um, say that, you know, uh, they're going to use 35% of their, their CARES funds award from the South Dakota Arts Council uh, for overhead, for utilities then you know we, they would need to be able to show if that were audited of course that prorated through december 31 of 2020 they would have to show you know what their utilities were and how that matches with with that percentage so in other words keep you need to keep track of all the financial records the way you would in any instance whether that's invoices for contractual work with an artist uh whether that is payroll you know for paid staff or whether that is your utility bills, uh, cost of rental, that type of thing. You would need to be able to produce those documents to verify those, those amounts. 
if it were to come to that. Um, great. And just so everyone knows, I did post a link to the Arts Council's uh, water cooler event registration so that if you wanted to talk through some of those additional questions with them this afternoon, that is in the chat as well as I know on their, uh, on their Facebook. Um, and it's been shared through some emails as well. Um, any other questions? It looks like we've, we've addressed quite a bit today, um, but please, as we're wrapping up here, feel free to, to ask uh, the last couple of questions you might have. Um, as we're waiting for any other questions, I just really wanted to say thank you again to these Arts Council staff for joining us today uh, and for answering all these questions. Um, it's been really great to get some additional information on, on all of the great work that you're doing and how this, um, this CARES Act funding will be distributed all throughout the state and how it will impact a lot of people really positively. And we're uh, excited to see how the state can continue to transform. Um, you know, it's never exciting when things disrupt the way we operate and all of our lives have been incredibly disrupted, but I'm just really excited to see all of the collaboration and all of the unique solutions that people across the state are coming up with. And uh, just thankful that the Arts Council is, is here to help support all of that great effort. Well, thank you, Andrew, and thank you to Art South Dakota for having SDAC staff uh, as part of its webinar series today. We hope we've answered some questions or at least started a dialogue uh, with all of those. I would like to thank for participating today as well. Um, you can reach out to us with your additional questions at any time, and if you're free today at 3 o'clock Central, uh, join us for our own water cooler series where we'll also answer more questions about this application process. And I, uh, I neglected to have the slide ready to go, but for the audience, uh, next week, Thursday at the same time, we have another webinar session on kind of case studies from the field of how arts organizations are reacting to uh, the current pandemic. And we'll have the executive directors from the South Dakota Symphony, the Levitt, Sioux Falls, as well as the Black Hills Playhouse, uh, join us to talk about how their organizations have, have responded and reacted and grown. And so uh, if you're interested in registering for that session, please go to artsouthdakota.org slash webinars. And uh, we're looking forward to that section, uh, session next week. And thank you all again so much for joining us. Wishing you a great rest of your day and we'll talk to everyone very soon. Thanks all.